today we're going to be having a look at no, maybe next week classic olive cone Christmas lights so I've tried to make this video a couple of times but I suspected it'd be a can of worms I didn't want to open but let's just go for it I will do a separate video on this set of lights the more figural sets and go through them in a bit more detail I'm not gonna get into the history of Christmas lights my knowledge has lots of limits there are videos on here that might explain better. I'm just gonna to go to what we had in the UK from the 40s onwards. If you're interested in lights from the USA, uh, there are a lot of other people on here who can cover that. The US has a very rich history of Christmas lights. It's still going strong today. And there are quite a few channels dedicated to Christmas lights, but that is a whole, whole big world of Christmas lights you can have a look at. We're just going to stick to UK lights for the time being. Now, the electric grid was standardised in the 40s to 240 volts. Years before that, there were different electric producers. They were regional with different voltages, AC, DC. Houses had different plug sockets. And the whole point of incorporating everything into the national grid was to just make life easier for everybody. Plus, all the power stations could supply different regions with one simple voltage and all the houses had the same plug sockets this helped with the consumer market as all appliances would then be made to run on 240 volts ac which also included christmas lights there have been many types before this that ran on old regional voltages i'm sure but i have no information on that that is too, too old of lights and the information on it is very scarce if anybody has any information about regional Christmas lights or lights made before standardization on 240 volts let us know in the comments below it's always great to get those nuggets of information uh, this video is already getting long-winded so tomorrow I'll be doing a short and condensed version just for the fault finding and care of these old lights this is actually a requested video again it was a video i was going to try and get done but somebody reached out on the facebook page about a set of lights that they had gifted to them by the grandparents and they uh, would like to get them going again and this video is to try and give them some hints tips on how to get them going but they might need to get an electrician to take a look at them or somebody who's good with electronics i'm sure you can reach out there might be other people on Facebook who could help out in the electronic space. People are good with a solder and iron. These are pretty simple to repair if, if you have an idea of what you're doing. When we started getting lights in the UK in the 40s, they pretty much started out as like sets of 18 or 16 milk glass lanterns. That was like the 40s and 50s, what you used to get. There were lanterns, mostly Chinese inspired plain olive cone shaped type bulbs like early versions of them and fruits and other shapes animals you could get you could get all sorts of course pifco were in the game with 18 lilliput fairy lights it's funny that the lilliput name actually did stick around for quite a few years they had the lilliput olive cone lights or fairy lights and then they had Lilliput lights. It's what they called their small screwing Christmas light bulbs. Some people called them pepper bulbs, pepper lamps. Pifco stuck with Lilliput and their spares were Lilliput spare bulbs as well. So after the set of 18, they did bubble lights. Again, bubble lights is another video I will do separately. They're a whole different category, but they are based on the similar technology. They did bubble lights. Ring of Roses. Moonlights. Lantern Lights.
fairy tale lights. And these were mainly just lampshades with different characters on. You could get Disney versions. Other companies did them with branding on with Disney, with Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. And you could get other Disney characters like Mickey. And these lights were quite common in the 50s and 60s. Pretty much just olive cone lamps, mainly clear. They were clear bulbs. And they were just olive cone lights with shades on. They also did boxes of spare bulbs called olive cone lamps. Pifco's own plain style of olive cone lights were elfin lights. And the box is very similar to what Philips, Osram, and Winfield and many others did. At this point, the standard screw in mini lights, the set of 20, 35, and 40, and these olive cone lamps were probably all just made in Hong Kong in the same factories and then just put into branded boxes for Philips, Osram, Winfield, and so on and so forth. That's what I suspect. If you have any information on this, comment below. Another one of the random variations are Atlas decoration lamps. They have like a velvet frosted coat into them. Again, super rare. I have seen them before. I might still have a bulb lying around somewhere, but again, interesting variation. Mazda had Jack Frost fairy lights, olive cone bulbs, which had plastic granules adhere to the outside. Colours were similar to what we get on the normal olive cone lights. The Mazda ones were more white, purple, blue, yellow, orange and green. The pictures of the spare bulbs are amazing. Look at the spare bulbs box. What a presentation that is. Don't get things like that anymore. But yeah, Jack Frost lights, another crazy variation of these lights. But they're all basically the same with the set to 12. The Osram olive cones, or string of lights as they were called. Set of 12, similar bulb holders. Bulbs are identical, except they are translucent. They are clear colored bulbs. Interesting set of lights. Some of them actually came with a tinsel garland, but just another variation of olive cone lights. You had sunshine decoration lights. Timothy's. They did their own style of cones and lanterns. You had 12 Vesta lanterns, like Chinese style. Vesta and Winfield, they did olive Christmas lights. Vestra and Winfield also did pearl olive Christmas lights. They weren't as pointy, they were rounder with a pearlescent sheen. And then Vesta and Winfield did novelty tree lights. And these were the last ones you could buy brand new in the 70s. Not sure about in the 80s. I know the spare bulbs lasted right through the 80s and you could still get them in the early 90s for like 79p from Woolworths. With these ones, the plain olive cones, you got 12 bulbs and 6 colours. You got 2 white, 2 blue, 2 red, 2 orange, 2 green, and two yellow. For the figural bulbs, not so much standardized, but the same sets were kind of produced in the 60s going into the 70s. 
and they generally consisted of the bunch of grapes, the orange, the lime, Santa head, green swirl, yellow seashell, the orange lantern, this is similar but not quite the same, the blue lantern, the small pink lanterns, I've got two here, the two different styles, and then you could get an orange, yellow and green lantern, like this one here, you could also get a green and yellow parrot, a yellow pine cone, and there were other little variations like this white snowman. There were other variations, but these were generally what the lights consisted of towards the end. Again, we'll go through the set of lights in another video. We'll just concentrate on the plain standard olive cone lights for this video. I will pre-warn that this set is not original, it has been modified. You can see it's got braided cable. These sets came in a circle, a circular set. The easiest way to describe it is you would have your plug, which originally would have probably been a bayonet fit plug to plug into a lamp. One cable would come out, go along, and then it would return back to the plug. And you'd have your 12 lights on the string with a little bit of a gap either side. And that's how these types of lights were. And that's how these type of lights were for many, many years, just circular sets. And it was really annoying because you couldn't really get much length out of them. And you had to have the lamp close to where you're plugging them into. But that's how they were. And most of mine have been upgraded with cable. And I had to add this cable and braid it all on by hand. It takes a long time to make it a straight set. So you see all this cable has been added on. And this is where, still gotta do that properly and solder it. I didn't have any solder at the time. But this is where the original cable starts. So that's how much extra has been put on. That is literally, that's how much you had before the first bulb. Crazy. So. The basics. This is generally the most common style. These bulb holders come in a drab olive colour and like a burgundy colour. You could get them in plain dark green or black. They are generally the same. These berries are for you to attach them to tree branches. So you pull the berry down and then you put your tree branch through like that and then you pull the belly up and it holds the light in an upright position or down position whichever way you want to do it bulbs are screw in i believe they are e10 if memory serves they're c6 in america these metal bulb holders inside you can see the teeth that bite in to the plastic this is bakelite i believe and these can pop out you can push them down, but you run the risk of cracking that piece of Bakelite in the bottom. So you have to be very careful. And I generally just use a screwdriver and push the sides down slowly but surely. There's two cables inside. One is soldered to the very, very bottom. You've got the terminal down there that has one of these cables soldered to it. The other cable is soldered to the side of this screw cup. I will leave a link in a video below to another Christmas light YouTuber called C6 Lights. He's American and he has come up with a little tool that you can use to not only push these bases back in but also remove them and it's well worth a look. Other problem you find is that these bulbs get quite warm on modern electric and the solder can get soft and it can come away from the terminal in the bulb holder and then your lights go off and you go oh what's going on there and then you go around and then you're screwing your bulb tighter and tighter and tighter and the solder just gets completely flat and doesn't go anywhere near the terminal this bulb has been resoldered but i've melted the original solder and added a piece of fresh solder on it to make a good fresh contact so you don't have to screw it in 
as far. You can see there's still plenty of screw thread on there to screw it down more if it needed it. Now that issue is from these lights. I don't think these lights like modern electricity. And I think the biggest Achilles heel is just running these lights as is. There's no fuse bulb on these. So when several bulbs fail, it can cause a cascade failure that makes all the lights go. And if you're not watching them or monitoring them, you can lose every single bulb and the spares are expensive these days. So all of my classic lights like this, and here's your big top tip, always run them with one of these. It's a dimmer plug. It plugs into a standard outlet and you can plug another light in there, specifically Christmas lights. And this dial, you can adjust. That's full power, full brightness. That makes them just really, really dim. It's not fully off. As you can see, the dial doesn't go all the way to the end of the dots. I usually have it about the 11 o'clock position and they're plenty bright and it just runs them a lot less harshly. They're still just as nice, but they also give them more legs because you're running them cooler and you're not getting overheating issues and you make your lights last a bit longer, your classic lights. Now, these bulbs are 20 volts and can't quite see what that is. It says, is that 0 0.15 amps? See what this yellow one says. Yeah, 0 0.15 amps. So 20 times 12 is 240. So these were designed to run on 240 volts. I believe electricity in the UK these days is 230 volts, so 10 volts under. So they shouldn't have a problem running on it. But again, I just think it's a little bit spicy these days, the modern electric. And plus these lights are old now. So get one of these. These are originally designed as a dimmer socket for table lamps, lamp stands, etc. But with fluorescent bulbs and LED bulbs, a lot of them, you can't dim them. You can get dim specific bulbs, but they can be a bit more expensive. But you get smart bulbs now, which are cheaper than having to buy. I mean, one of these is like six quid on eBay these days. I will leave a link below for one of these on eBay. I'm just gonna find the one that locks closest to this. I'm not an affiliate of the seller. I am not the seller. And it's just to give you an idea of what to look for rather than buying that specific one. But again, it's just to give you the hand. So these run. 20 volts at 0.15 amps is 3 amps I believe for the whole set again I know there's a few people who are qualified electricians who are subscribed to this channel you put the proper information down below because it's not my field this will do 300 watts so you can run multiple sets of these on one plug and it's not a problem so I'll get them turned on So let me just get it to the voltage I like. See, that's generally the brightness I run it at. And for me, they're plenty bright, the colors are nice and vivid. This is full power. That's full brightness. And they're still, they're nice and bright, but I can already feel the heat from them. And just to avoid failures, I just run them a little bit cooler around about that. So that at the moment is at the, one o'clock position on the dial. This is five o'clock, that's one o'clock, and that is all the way down to what looks like eight o'clock on the dial. And you can still see they are still on, they're just extremely, extremely dim. So, first things first, if you've got a set of these which work, get a dimmer plug and it'll make them last longer. If you've got a set of these that you haven't plugged in for a long time, again, get a dimmer plug, turn it down to about 12 o'clock, and then if you've got any blown bulbs, you're not gonna put a strain on the rest of the bulbs, which will force them to pop. So, the common problems I find is these bulb holders can pop out, and then you put them back in again. Cables can come off, and it'll either need soldering on the central terminal base or on the side of the cup again. Make sure you clean the area up with a little bit of a wire brush or some wire wool before you solder it. A little bit of flux would probably help. Bulbs that get a little bit warm, which requires you to add a little bit of fresh solder. Might be able to find one that's a little bit squashed. Ah, there you go. 
Look at that. That's what happens. You can see it's been squashed down. That one will probably need resoldering at some point, but at the moment we're still getting a good contact. We're probably just on the limit of the screw thread. So there's your little hints and tips to run these older lights. When it comes to bubble lights with the older sets, I'm not sure if they'll run cooler and still bubble. They may do, they just may not bubble as much, but I don't think people still run classic original style PIFCO bubble lights because they are so rare and so old. I personally have modern American bubble lights. Again, that is a whole nother video that I'll do eventually. But there you go, that's classic UK Olipone lights, set to 12, common faults, how to fix them and how to run them. Get a dimmer plug. If I find one that needs repair or needs some soldering doing, I'll do that on another video. But until then, I hope you enjoyed this one. Like, share, subscribe, send this video to people like your mum, dad or nan, grandparents who used to have these lights, might bring back some memories. And I will catch you on the next one.